Today I am going over what you need at an absolute minimum on your baby registry, or a minimalist baby registry is a more trendy name for it. I know some of us might be going through some financial uncertainty right now. Maybe you just wanna reduce any potential clutter due to space constraints, or maybe you just wanna focus on what is absolutely essential so that you can use your savings to splurge on something else. Whatever the case, let's get right into the minimalist baby registry, but before we do, I have to shamelessly plug my channel please like and subscribe if you have not already and if you are a current subscriber thank you so much I really do appreciate you guys full disclosure I put more than this on my first baby registry in all honesty I put way too much on my first baby registry. You would know that if you watch my baby products I regret buying video, the list was long. I also have a bit of a shopping problem, but again, these are the bare necessities for those of you who have more control than me. First, I will categorize essentials into eat, sleep, and poop categories because newborn life, that's, that's basically what it is. Number one in the eat category, for zero dollars, you can use your boobs to feed your baby. It kind of hurts. So you might want to get some lanolin cream or coconut oil or some sort of salve to put on your nipples because if this is your first baby, breastfeeding can be painful while you and baby are learning how to do it. I would also consider putting nursing pads on your registry. I use disposable because I was working outside of the home after my maternity leave and I didn't want to bring reusable breast milk soaked pads back and forth from work so I use disposable but you can use reusable nursing pads as a more sustainable option. I do feel like this is essential because otherwise you're going to be soaking all of your bras. I'll link the nursing pads and the nipple cream that I used in the description box below along with everything else that I recommend in this video. I also personally bought a breastfeeding pillow but minimalist baby registry it is not a hundred percent necessary at all. You can just use the regular pillows that you have have on your bed to prop baby for nursing sessions and honestly more often than not that's what I ended up doing with my third child. If you already know that you're not going to be exclusively breastfeeding your baby for whatever reason like if you're working outside of the home after maternity leave you will need to get a breast pump and some bottles. Be sure to get your free breast pump from insurance. Go watch my free baby stuff video after this one. I go into detail on how to get your free breast pump there. I also in that video talk about how you can get some free bottles so that you don't have to buy a whole set or anything. For bottles though, keep in mind that baby when they're first born will be eating every two to three hours. So you're gonna want a minimum of six bottles just so that you're not having to wash bottles constantly throughout the day. With six bottles, you'll only have to wash two times a day, which I think is plenty. Obviously you can survive on less, but I would not want to be washing bottles more than twice a day. Also, when you're looking at getting pumps, make sure you try to get a pump where you pump straight into the bottle and then you can put a nipple right onto that same bottle. It'll reduce the total amount of bottles needing to be washed. You don't have to worry about transferring anything. I personally had a Medela pump and Medela was compatible with my Dr. Brown's bottles. So I could pump right into my Dr. Brown's bottles and then add the nipple to it and was good to go. There are a ton of pumps that can do this, but just when you're doing your research, make sure you keep that in mind. Last thing in the eat category is look at getting some breast milk freezer storage bags so that you can build up a supply. I would highly suggest doing that if you can produce enough for it because it's free food. Next category is sleep. There are so many sleeping options for babies. Bassinets, cribs, baby loungers, baby nests, but really you can just use a pack and play that has a built-in bag bassinet in it. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I am a pack and play advocate. It's what I use for my third born baby. So I won't go into the full details, but we got the one that came with the built-in bassinet for the first few months. That's where baby boy slept. When he was starting to be able to roll just a little bit, we took out the bassinet and he slept in just the top shelf portion. And when he got close to being able to start pulling up a little, we removed that and he slept in the pack and play just like a crib because it is a portable crib. It'll save you a ton of money and if you have space constraints, it'll also save you a ton of room. Next registry item I would suggest are three swaddle blanket 
it's for the newborn stage. Now I have talked about swaddles in other videos and normally I recommend getting a few different types of swaddles to test out, see what your baby likes. Oftentimes I suggest going to the Facebook market to look for cheap swaddles because you can get them for super duper cheap used on the Facebook market. But for minimalist purposes, if I could only choose one, I would just go with the regular muslin swaddle blanket because it has so many uses. Hopefully your baby likes being swaddled and you can use it for that. But in the case that they don't, you can still use it as a little play mat, as a light blanket for the summer, as a car seat cover, as a burp cloth, or once your child is a little bit older, it can become their security blanket. I personally did have some muslin swaddle blankets. My kids didn't like being swaddled with their arms down, but I was able to use it as a burp cloth and a car seat cover, so I did get good use out of it. So we covered eat, sleep, now to poop. There will be a lot of poop. Diapers and wipes will clearly be a necessity because everybody poops. I personally use disposable diapers, but if you want a more sustainable option, you can use cloth diapers and it will probably save you money in the long run. It'll be more money up front for cloth diapers, but cloth diapers can grow with your baby, so you could potentially get years of use out of the same cloth diaper. You'll also want to register for a diaper cream because you will eventually need it. Babies poop a lot. I just got a big tub of Boudreaux's butt paste that I kept at the diaper changing station. Then for my diaper bag, I just put all the little diaper cream samples that I got from all the different free registry boxes and bags. Just stuck those in my diaper bag so that I wasn't lugging around full size heavy diaper creams. And again, watch my free baby stuff video after this on how to get those free diaper creams. Next category is out and about. You are going to want a car seat travel system, AKA a car seat that clicks into its stroller. I won't tell you specifically what travel system to get because that's really dependent on your individual budget. You can get travel systems from 100 to $200 all the way to over $1,000. The thing I would say to be cognizant of is the weather from where you live. I'm originally from Minnesota and when I go visit my family up there and I had really cheap strollers that have tiny little wheels, they didn't work in snowy conditions. And even now, currently living in Texas, some of the parks and trails we go to are not paved. It's all gravel and I like the big wheels on my stroller to get me through the rougher terrain. Also, I like one hand maneuverability so I can text and drive my stroller. Next is a baby carrier. I think this is a hundred thousand percent an essential. I baby wore for hours and hours a day. I, I'm not a minimalist. I had a whole bunch of different baby carriers for all types of situations and if a baby spit up on one of my carriers, I was able to wash it and not be without a carrier but you will definitely need at least one baby carrier. If your baby is ever fussy, just put them in the baby carrier and walk around your house. My twins had colic and reflux really bad, so I basically just baby wore them at all times. I had both of them in my baby carrier. I used a boba wrap for both of them, and I just walked around my house for hours and hours carrying them. It was a great workout. <laughs> Next category is clothing. In terms of newborn size clothing, I would say you need very few. Babies grow out of the newborn size very quickly and some babies are born already grown out of the newborn size. My best friend bought a whole bunch of newborn clothes and then she had like a 10 pound baby and he didn't fit into any of it. My suggestion if you are on a budget is to focus on zero to three month size clothing and three to six month size clothing. Little babies do spit up. You may be changing their outfits a few times a day depending on how often they spit up. Start off with six little sleep and play jammies. My kids lived in them their first year. You don't need to buy a shirt with separate pants and separate socks. The sleep and play ensemble takes care of everything and keeps their little feet warm. You don't have to worry about little socks getting lost. It's way easier to change their diapers, especially if you get the zipper sleep and plays. Definitely get the zipper ones. I wouldn't suggest getting the ones with buttons. You may have to do laundry every other day, but you can survive with just six sleep and play jammies. 
And that's it. That's all you need to survive with baby. You can make it as affordable or luxurious as you want with no clutter in between. Let me know if you think anything on my list isn't truly an essential or if you think I missed something that truly is an essential. If you wanna check out some of my other prepping for baby videos, they should be floating over my face at this point. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.